truck drivers. What's a creepy story you've got from the middle of nowhere? Part 1. Unwind and enjoy. If you like what you see, hit subscribe and let your friends know about Thread Tonic. Account 1. Not a truck driver, but... Once I was driving through the Canadian Rockies late at night and had just passed through a small town. So I'm driving through the pitch black, and I need to stop to pee and have a smoke. But because it's so dark, I miss the last rest stop for a while. No problem. The highway is completely deserted. So I pull to the side of the road, have my pee while staring out into the dark, and then light up a cigarette and stand by my car. As I'm standing there, I see the figure of a man just walking out of the tree line. I'm miles from civilization with patchy cell service, and there isn't a soul on the road. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, and maybe it was a deer, but nope. This was a man. So I calmly walk back to the driver's door and get in, locking the doors behind me. I'm keeping my eye on this guy as I nervously smoke and have my car in drive, ready to peel out. But for some reason, I just stayed put. The guy walks right up to my passenger door and knocks on the window. I crack the window and ask what's up. He replies to me in a very, very serious tone. I need you to call the cops. I cautiously ask why, and he tells me he had gone out into the woods to kill himself. But he couldn't go through with it because he thought of his daughters right before he was about to do it. I call the cops while the guy quietly cries outside. He had a kitchen knife that he was going to use on himself, so I stayed in the car and advised him to maybe leave the knife on the ground before the cops arrived. The cops came and got him. But before they left with him, I gave him a solid heart-to-heart -heart and wished him well. I still think about him. I hope he was able to turn things around. Count two. I pull into a Purdue plant, drop my empty trailer, and go park where they allow bobtails to sit, right next to a nice little pond. My pickup was in 12 hours, so I do my PTI and lay down in the bunk. At about 3 a.m., I hear something tapping on my passenger side door. I get up look out the window expecting to see someone, maybe a driver asking for a lumper check, but no one's there. I think maybe I'm hearing things, so I go back to lay down. As soon as my head hits the pillow, I hear the tapping again, except this time it's on my driver's side. Same thing as before. I jump up and look out my window, but nothing's there. I double lock my doors just in case and open my side hatches so I can hear what's going on outside. After about 15 minutes, I hear a very light splat, splat, splat going along the driver's side of the truck. I slowly get up, planning to look out my window at the exact moment whoever it is knocks on my door. Then I hear a thud coming from the roof of the cab. I stop, grab my tire thumper off its hook, and ready myself for whatever the hell is going on. Then a motherfucking goose falls off the top of the truck and lands on my hood. It stands up, waddles back and forth, and looks at me. As we make eye contact, the tapping at my door starts again. I say, fuck it, and throw open the driver's side door. And there's another damn goose waddling away with all the speed it can manage, honking like a five-year-old who just found the horn on his new bike. The pond I parked next to had a ton of them just dicking around. Needless to say, it was hard to sleep that night because every couple of minutes the damn geese would peck at my door or land on the cab and waddle around. Account 3. Trucker here. I think the best creepy thing that ever happened to me was when I was heading from Tucson, AZ, up into Salt Lake City, UT. Well, the main highway had been taken out in a flash flood and was under construction, so I had to take a weird detour through the mountains in Lower Utah. Well, it was getting late and I was getting tired, so I pulled off onto the shoulder and went to sleep in my bunk. Now this was in the middle of nowhere. The closest town was like 40 miles away, so it is completely pitch black outside once I turn the lights off. Anyway, around 4 a.m., I wake up because I'm hearing something messing with my truck, like playing with the air and power cables between my cab and the trailer, which is literally six inches from where my head is at, but on the outside of the cab. Then I feel something climb onto the landing that's on the back of my truck, and it shakes my whole truck, so I'm guessing something around 200 to 300 pounds was climbing around back there. I'm thinking like a mountain lion or a bear. At this point, I'm wide awake, and I want to get this thing away from me. So I slam my hand into my cab wall, trying to scare whatever is out there, slam hard enough to really make it loud. I then hear someone, 
a male, scream bloody murder, and I hear them fall off the back of my truck. I then hear about 15 other people all around my truck yelling. I climb up front, turn on my lights, and illuminate a squad of army reserves doing their midnight ruck march and capture drills. It turns out these guys were supposed to go find an abandoned truck and secure it for their midnight drills. That truck was three miles back down the road. They were not expecting me to be sleeping there and thought I was part of the drill. I'm ex-military, so after explaining I was not part of their test and legit was just there out of coincidence, we laughed it off. They had to radio their CO and tell him I was there and not have the other squads bother me. Account 4. I used to work as a road train driver in the Gascoigne region of outback Western Australia. A lot of black dog phenomena on night shift. I would see all kinds of things appear in the shadows because of fatigue, or three goats would change into some sort of beast. One time I swear I nearly ran over a corgi, which would be astronomical odds there being one in the wild in this part of the outback. One night I pulled up to sleep, let the engine run cold for ten minutes, then tried to sleep. I woke up to noises, not voices, but some sort of order to the noises and the whole cab of the truck was shaking. I looked in the mirror and saw shadows around the vehicle. I turned the truck on and switched on every single light attached to the thing and hastily continued my run to the port. This is a big cab. It would have taken a lot to move it. I rationalize it as it being windy with some goats around the truck in fatigue. Either way, it scared the fuck out of me and I never slept on night shift again. Account 5. I used to deliver hotshot freight across the Great Plains, Minnesota area. One night around 2 a.m., I was hauling across North Dakota trying to reach Montana by morning. I was delivering a particularly valuable tractor part that a farm desperately needed for the following day. I began to notice some highway hypnosis sneaking up on me, but it didn't really bother me because I'd been through it hundreds of times before. Anyone who has driven across North Dakota knows that it is incredibly flat. Like, really flat. There also tend to be very straight and long roads. It's somewhat easy to see things on the road that are far away, even at night. I noticed something long on the road, spanning my entire lane, approximately half a mile in front of me. I slowed down a little and prepared to move into the opposite lane, thinking it was some retread off a blown tire. As I got closer, I noticed it was two people laying head to toe across the entire lane. I swerved into the other lane, successfully avoiding them, and came to an almost complete stop. But they didn't move. Not an inch. I was just about to back up and check on them when I remembered a story that an old graybeard colleague of mine told me. He told me that in certain remote areas, people will lie down in the middle of the road and wait for a car or truck to stop and see what's going on. At that point, the road layers, along with whoever else is hiding in the nearby bushes, will beat the shit out of the driver and steal his vehicle, leaving him in the middle of nowhere. I decided not to back up. And when the two people in the road saw me put my truck back in gear and drive away, they both got up and walked toward the shoulder. I called the police and explained what happened, but we were so far away from civilization that I doubt anything came of it. Thanks to that old gray beard, I got to keep my truck, my job, and my teeth. Account 6. Parked off an exit ramp at about 3 a.m. for my 10-hour. The moon was full and high and I spotted an unmistakably human figure in a nearby cut cornfield. A little spooky, but I just wrote it off as an old timer putting up a scarecrow for the grandkids. Started watching a few YouTube videos before turning in, and out the corner of my vision, I thought I saw movement. I shut my lights off to get a good look, saw the figure, but nothing else. I couldn't be sure, but it looked like maybe it was in a different spot. Maybe a little closer, even. I was definitely feeling a bit spooked. The highway was devoid of anyone besides a car passing every ten minutes or so. I didn't want to, but I had to jump out to pee. I considered a bottle, but I told myself I was being childish. I took a look at the figure, and it was right where I figured it should be. I hopped out, walked between my truck and trailer, and started leaking. Every fiber of my being wanted to look. I told myself again I was being foolish, but I couldn't help it. I looked out. The field was empty. The figure wasn't there. My stomach dropped, I pinched off and jumped back in. I took off down the highway, didn't give one shit about a violation. Stopped 40 minutes up the road at a well-lit and very full loves. Haven't stopped on a ramp since. Account 7. Used to do deliveries, not actually a truck driver, though. 
I used to have this regular that was out in the boondocks, 25 miles out of the way of civilization, and smack dab in the middle of two large towns. I would drive this route maybe once a month and would always pass at least one car driving towards me due to the sheer length of the drive. There was a small group of old houses on this route that were really broken down, and I had never seen anyone around them in six-plus months of driving the route. Always assumed they were vacant because they didn't look livable. Well, I was driving out to this customer one fall afternoon. I had been driving for a very long time without seeing a single car drive towards me. Finally, I drove past the abandoned houses, and there was one old lady in her front yard pushing an old manual grass cutter, but she stopped in her tracks as I drove towards her. I took it as a sign I was speeding or something and slowed down. I took a quick glance in my rearview mirror after passing by, and she was staring straight at me. She dropped the grass cutter and turned 180 degrees to do this. It was just very odd and definitely set off my spidey sense. Never saw her again or anyone else on that route by those houses in the 10 months I drove it. Account 8. Not the middle of nowhere, but a trash route in a pretty rural area. We were at a stop loading trash when a pickup stopped behind us. A petite woman in scrubs that were covered in blood got out and asked for directions to Lake Jack Nolan. She said there was a deer that had been hit by a truck and she had been sent to remove the remains. She never said who sent her, but she wasn't moving a deer anywhere at her size. We gave her directions and sent her on her way. We all wondered if she was going to dump a body or something. She was already covered in blood, in a nice truck, and was supposed to be on her way to move roadkill that was far too heavy for her to handle. Then we went back to work. Account 9. Not sure if this story is creepy, but it's definitely scary. My father was a truck driver in East Africa in the 80s and early 90s. During the years leading up to the Rwandan genocide, my father was passing through Rwanda. He reached a checkpoint and was forcibly removed from his truck at gunpoint. Apparently, he looked like he belonged to the Tutsi tribe, and they put him in a cage with other Tutsi prisoners. He tried communicating that he wasn't Rwandan, but no one spoke the same language as him. Every night, they would take about five people from the cage and slaughter them in front of him. After the third night, he saw a man who spoke a little bit of Swahili, which my dad spoke, and told him that he's not Rwandan and showed him his ID. Somehow that guy got him out, and he was handed the keys to his truck and was on his way. Account 10. Driving through an abandoned section of Baltimore at 3 in the morning, my CB radio turned itself on and crackled for a bit. Out of nowhere, some voice over the radio said in a deep, southern drawl, I ain't got no panties on. I could see up and down the interstate for miles and saw not one set of headlights. Account 11. Driving through rural NM Bisti area with the crazy melted rock look. No plants or anything, just rock and sand. Monsoon time, raining cats and dogs, just pouring so hard you could barely see going 20 mepre. Thunder and lightning just rocking the car. Sometimes turning into hail and pounding you. Just a nasty storm. Came around a corner and the whole countryside was legit on fire. Like 20 foot tall flames, hundreds of yards in all directions, while pouring rain at dusk. Just rocks and dirt wildly on fire in the pouring rain. Just slowly drove on, it was totally freaky and surreal. Honestly thought I may have hallucinated it. Checked the news, a propane truck slid off the road going way too fast and apparently busted open pretty violently and lit on fire. Never saw the truck, must have been behind something. Felt a bit bad after about not stopping. Account 12. A good buddy of mine is a long-haul trucker for my company. A few months ago, he woke up in a parking lot surrounded by police. Some dude had gotten shot and dumped 15 feet from his truck. Account 13. My dad drove a truck between Edinburgh and London and tells this story often. He was driving down the motorway and looked to his right, saw a woman with a Miss Trunchbull bun, as he describes it, staring at him with a terrified expression from a car next to him. Before he really knew how to react, the car pulled off at the next exit, and my dad, although shaken, carried on. About half an hour later, a different car with a different driver pulled alongside my dad, with the same woman in the passenger seat, with the same expression on her face. My dad thinks, fuck this, and plans to pull into the next services to report it as even if it's nothing or misunderstanding. Better to be safe than sorry, right? Anyway... The car disappears before he can get any details, plates, etc., and he thinks there is no point in calling the police with no details, so he carries on driving. Literally about four hours later, almost in London, 
Yet another car pulls alongside him with the same woman, same Miss Trunchbull hair, same terrified expression. Except this time, she appears to be screaming at my dad through the window, so my dad pulls over into a lay-by and calls the police. Apparently, they have received three other calls about the same woman car in the same area in the last few minutes. It is unfortunately anticlimactic as he never heard anything more about it, but he didn't see her again, and although he kept an eye on the news, he didn't see anything about it. Hopefully, it's just a giant coincidence. Who knows? Account 14. The repeating nature of this one reminds me of one weird story back when I was in high school. It was summer and my dad's birthday, so we drove to a casino two hours away to watch a boxing match with my uncle. It finishes, and we drive back the same night. We're nearing a canyon with no phone reception, so we call my mom and tell her we'll be home soon. The canyon usually takes about 30 minutes with no traffic. It's around midnight, so we enter the canyon and we're all pretty tired. To keep us talking, we start telling stories, most of them creepy stories. This goes on for a while and it feels like time is passing in a haze. We pass this butte in the canyon and suddenly I get deja vu. I'm convinced we already passed that before. All of us have driven this canyon a hundred times and know the layout. We keep talking and then we pass the same butte again. This time I point it out and my dad and uncle notice the time it's 1 a.m. and we're still not home. So we all start to get a bit freaked out. We stop talking and just watch the road slowly pass by. Now that we're paying attention, though, time seems to catch up. We exit the canyon around 1.15 a.m. and call my mom, who is freaked out she hadn't heard from us. We still, to this day, have no idea where that extra 45 minutes or so went. Account 15. Around 2006, I was driving a flatbed, and I picked up a load of construction material in rural Tennessee. I remember it being somewhere between Memphis and Nashville, but closer to the intersection of the MS, AL, and TN state lines. A tarp was required for the load, so I strapped everything down, tarped it, and left the shipper. About five miles down the road, in the middle of nowhere on a two-lane road, I noticed my tarp flapping in the wind. I found a wide shoulder and pulled over to fix it. I realized I had done a poor job tarping the load and decided to redo it on the side of the road. I undid all the bungee straps, dragged the tarps off, rolled them back up, climbed up on the load, and started unrolling the tarps again. That's when I saw a guy walking down the same side of the road coming towards my truck. At first, I didn't think much of it other than to keep an eye on him since I was in the middle of nowhere. As I was climbing down to start hooking the bungee straps back on, the guy was getting close enough that I was paying more attention to him than to tarping my load. I grabbed my winch bar and set it on the trailer where I was working, just in case. An eight-pound solid metal bar about four feet long, tapered to a blunt point on one end and hollow on the other, used for tightening straps and chains. The first thing I noticed was his hair. It looked like a mullet but was patchy, like he had tried to cut his own hair and given up. The next thing I noticed were his eyes, which I can only describe as off, they were clear, so he didn't seem drunk or high, but something wasn't right. His clothes were dirty and not well-maintained, and he had dirty white tennis shoes with no laces on one shoe, the tongue noticeably out of place. He stopped by me, waited until I acknowledged him, and then said, I've got a long walk. I replied, Yeah, man, you do. We're in the middle of nowhere, making it clear there was no ride to be had. He nodded, started walking by me, stopped at my truck's driver door, turned around, came back to me and repeated, I've got a long walk. I explained that I couldn't give him a ride due to insurance reasons and apologized for not being able to help him out. He seemed to accept this, turned around and left. I waited for him to get a little way away from my truck and then started working on finishing the tarp job, still keeping an eye on him. As I was putting on the last of the bungee straps, I looked over and saw he had turned around and was heading back towards me, now about 100 yards in front of my truck. It looked like he was talking on a cell phone, his hand up to his face, his other hand waving as if having a conversation with someone. I finished with the straps, grabbed my winch bar and climbed into my truck as he was about 10 yards away. As soon as I was in the cab, I locked the doors and set the winch bar on the passenger seat just in case. I looked at the guy and realized he wasn't talking on a phone. He was talking to his hand, and it didn't look like a pleasant chat. It looked like an angry conversation. 
I cranked the truck, put it in gear, and pulled out without looking for traffic. As I passed him, he just looked at me, still holding his hand to his face with a dead expression, staring at me. It gave me the creeps. About the time I hit fifth or sixth gear, I looked in the mirror and there was no one there. Ooh.